oil. It's quite a distant issue for us teenagers, right? That mainly comes from undereducation. I mean, we know it's like a black liquid out there somewhere underground for some reason. Some of you may have heard something about that it's bad and somehow connected with global warming, but none of us could really say how or why. And some of you may be going, oh, oil, I know what that is. That's like the thing that you make fuel out of, right? Not even close, actually. You don't realize it, but your whole lifestyle is based on oil products. I mean, you live in it, you drive in it, you walk on it, you're sitting on it. Right now, I'm speaking into it. Oil is everywhere. Oil is quite literally all over you right now, and you don't even know it. I mean, natural resources have been around for a while. And by that, I mean that we've been using things like oil since 4th century BC. But I say it's about time we moved on. Oil is expensive, it's dangerous to extract, it pollutes the earth, and on top of all of that, according to The Guardian, we're gonna run out of oil in 30 years. And listen, I know that for us teenagers, a threat in 30 years doesn't sound that bad. You're thinking, I don't know what I'm going to eat tomorrow. I don't know how my life is going to look like in two years. How am I supposed to care about something that might happen in 30 years? But please, please be mindful that this will happen in our lifetimes. If nothing changes, most of us in this room will see the very last drop of oil. And that's why alternatives are crucial. If we don't find a proper alternative in time, the end of oil will also signify the end of our lifestyle as we know it. That is because crude oil is used to make materials that we make everything out of. As I already said, oil is everywhere. And by that, I mean everything that's made out of plastic, everything that's made out of the rubber, your clothes, even if they're 100% cotton or wool, they are dyed with pigments that come direct, directly from oil. Even your goddamn toothpaste comes from oil. And that's why alternatives are crucial. The oil industry is so much bigger than just making fuels for your cars. And that's why phasing out oil is so much more difficult than just driving an electric car. And let's be realistic. We're not ready as a society to just up and leave plastic and rubber behind on a random Thursday. That's why proper, feasible alternatives are crucial, and that's where the whole point of my speech comes in. The most feasible and realistic alternative out there, in my opinion, is, drumroll please, bacteria. I know how it sounds when I say bacteria, you're hearing things like bacterial infections. And yes, bacteria do have a bad reputation. They can be quite scary sometimes. But bacteria are actually one of your best friends, and you don't even know it. So here are some quick facts to convince you that bacteria are really cool. There are about 39 trillion microbial, body, micro, microbial cells in your body right now. Those include fungi, viruses, and bacteria. And those bacteria don't just float around randomly, they serve a purpose. These bacteria in your body do everything from helping you digest your food to protecting you from infections. And humans have been using bacteria since the dawn of time. I mean, our species likely survived in rough environments only because we learned how to preserve our, preserve our food with bacteria. Heck, humans and bacteria most likely share a common ancestor. We're family. Bacteria have been on this earth long before us, and they will most definitely be here long after we're gone. So, now that you know that bacteria are actually really cool, what does that have to do with oil? 
Well, since bacteria are single-celled organisms that multiply every 20, sec 20 minutes, and their only life goal is to survive and make more of themselves, they are great at adapting. That means that if you expose bacteria to a, a chemical that is toxic to them, with enough random mutations and enough time, they might just start degrading it or using it to make something less toxic that they can coexist with. This all basically rephrased means that we can find bacteria that can synthesize or break down pretty much any chemical compound out there. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, yeah, kind of. Some of these bacteria can be harmful to humans or can be too difficult to man maintain on an industrial level. Well, that's where recombinant plasmids come in. It's a really, really complex mechanism, so here's a way to oversimplify it and watered-down version of it. You have a bacteria that has some feature you want. You find out what specific part of its uh, genetic information codes for it. You extract the whole DNA, you multiply that region a bunch, you feed it to another bacteria that you know and love, and voila, you have a bacteria that you can maintain, you know is not harmful to humans, and has your wanted feature. This mechanism is also really important, since it makes this alternative accessible. This means that no single country or company can patent a bacteria. All you need is to get your hands on that specific gene sequence, and you can make your very own factory. And it can be quite difficult to understand the full mechanism yet. I mean, you don't even know how things are made out of oil in the first place. It's not like you take a barrel of oil, reach your hand in and pull out a shirt or like a piece of plastic. That would be too easy. Oil is so popular in our industry because it's basically like a soup full of organic and non-organic chemicals that we use to make our everyday usable materials. Let's take plastic for, as an example, right? Plastic is made out of these cool little things called monomers. Think of them as Lego building blocks in this case. They don't do much on their own, but when we stack a bunch of them together, they make our beloved plastic molecule. And the connection to oil here is that we get those monomers directly from oil. Now, what if I told you that there are bacteria that synthesize those very same monomers? And the same goes for things like rubber, gasoline, pigments, anything, you name it. Since the only purpose for oil here is to get our starting materials, we can phase out oil out of our industry by simply buying our Legos from another store. And that's my big idea. Think about it, honestly. Which sounds better to you? Going out, finding oil, extracting it from the earth, transporting it, filling, spilling a few tons in the process, and only then being able to make something out of it, or simply taking a bacteria, feeding it sugar, because bacteria only feed on sugar, make, giving it the right conditions, and they do all of the rest. They literally even multiply on their own. So, Honestly, which one is better? An industry that feeds on oil or an industry that feeds on sugar? Unfortunately, this, the extraction process is not the only problem with the oil industry. The end products are big pollutants too. Things like plastics and rubbers don't decompose from hundreds to thousands of years, and we just keep, keep making more of them. Things like microplastics are all over the place. They're in our food, in our water, in our blood. Scientists even found microplastics in a newborn baby. Now, what if I told you that bacteria can fix this problem too? Bacteria are great at not only synthesizing things, but 
but at breaking them down too. Scientists have found numerous bacteria that break down things like plastics, rubbers, even gasoline. Scientists even found a bacteria that makes biofuels out of carbon dioxide. This is revolutionary, and the possibilities are endless here. We literally keep discovering new bacteria every day with new applications. And this point is crucial in our solution. It's important to not only phase out oil and substitute it, but to undo the harm it has done to our Earth already. By using bacteria, we can turn this into this. By using bacteria, we can not only undo our past mistakes, keep our current lifestyles, but to also progress in the future. And listen, I know that this kind of change will not happen overnight. There's a lot of money put into oil. There's a lot of people depending on it. But the world will change whether we like it or not. It is only up to us if the change will happen for us or despite of us. <coughs> and that is why I'm proposing an industry that runs on sugars and not on oils. Thank you.